Hi there. Um, I thought I'd record a short video about my ham radio operator's career uh, and how it's been a bit of a non-starter since I got my license uh, months ago. Um, it was pretty obvious to me that the, at the time, probably incorrectly, uh, that the easiest way to get to get a HF uh, rig set up as quickly as possible was to use my ELAV FDM Duo because um, obviously it's transceiver. QRP, so it's five watts, but you know I'm only supposed to be um, using ten watts anyway, so that sort of seemed fine. Um, and I went out and I bought a buddy stick, which is kind of a portable, tunable sort of vertical antenna that you sort of stand on a tripod. But uh, I can't remember how much it cost. It was over two hundred quid. Anyway, set that up in the back garden and bait, uh, with the lad, um, I bought the MFJ. 949e tuner specifically for that purpose um, <clears throat> but there was so little power coming out of the e-lab the, the buddy stick um, tuned fine I, I had a really good swire on it but um, basically nobody could hear me um, you know now the e-lab was designed to put out 5 watts but what, what the actual effective radiator power was I don't know but uh, I tried it several times nobody could hear me a guy who works for me actually lives in a village only a couple of miles away and he's a radio ham and he couldn't hear me from there so uh, it was pretty obvious I had to come up with something else and uh, in the end I decided that well I've got to get myself a proper rig so um, I didn't really do anything for several months and then um, recently I sold I've sold six radios because I counted them all up and I had like about 30 it was literally ridiculous and I have duplicates of several of the Sony radios that I owned I, I bought duplicates because uh, a couple of years ago two or three years ago I you know when I realized how good those radios were uh, compared to um, the other equipment that I owned at the time I was sort of concerned that you know my 2001 D if it ever went wrong that you know I'd want a backup kind of straight away so anyway so I bought replacements for three or four of those radios um, uh, and I sold them because the, four, the original four Sony radios I bought are still working fine touch wood um, I also sold my Icom ICR20 wideband scanner because um, I having bought it as a kind of experiment for DXing the audio bandwidth filter on it's so wide that it, it doesn't make DXing impossible I mean I, I recorded a very nice signal from North Korea one afternoon uh, out in a field but but the bottom line is is just not suitable so um so i saw, actually i sold that for quite a lot more money than i paid for it um and uh and i sold about a couple of other radios that i just don't use uh, and in doing that i raised about 1500 quid uh, and from that i bought this icom ic756 transceiver uh, 100 watts from another radio aficionado who has a youtube channel um i won't mention him by name um if he wishes to make himself known he'll probably see this video and uh uh, and he can let you all know but um, I bought it from him uh, at a very very good price I can't remember how much the, uh, these things cost when they were new but I've, I've got a feeling that it, they were like $3,000 or something a huge amount of money anyway so um, I got I bought this for a lot less than that it's had the filter upgrades so uh, and it's absolutely superb um, so I've, I've set it up with the MFJ um, and I've started making HF QSOs um, the past couple of days and so far I've QSO'd um, nine or ten countries um, European Russia uh, Switzerland uh, Denmark you know basically all European um, I nearly made contact with a North American last night from Maine um, but someone else got in there before me um, but I've, rec I've recorded his chat actually which I'll, I'll upload on another video so so here basically is a proper rig um, that I can use that will will certainly see me through the intermediate uh, license um, and you know hopefully many years of, uh, of, of use um, one thing I had to do was buy a power supply for it uh, which I did from Waters and Stanton uh, and there it is it cost me about 100 quid it was 107 quid with shipment uh, I'm slightly peeved because when it arrived, the power supply's actually got a small dent, a small dent in it. It's, you can't, it's not very clear, but and I wrote to them and just said, sort of said, you know, it's got a dent in it. What do you want to do? And they literally just didn't write back. 
So uh, not very good customer service from, from those guys. I'm sort of surprised. I mean, it works fine, but you know, when you pay 100 quid for something, you expect it to be perfect, and it's not. So, um, but I literally can't be bothered to do anything else about it. I can't be bothered to even write them another email. You know, if they if they don't have the you know decency to respond to an email from a customer with a something that's arrived with a, even a slight amount of damage, then you know, what's the world coming to? Um, so the signal actually on, on here now, so that is actually Echo India 7, Hotel Delta Bravo, uh, Dale uh, in Ireland, just outside Dublin I think, um, I just had a QSO with him about 10-15 minutes ago, um, so there you go. Uh, right, in terms of antennas, um, I've set something up, we've set something up temporarily. So I bought a broadband vertical from eBay. I think it was 88 quid. It tunes from 80 to 6 metres. Um, there are certain bands, I can't remember which, in intermediate bands that you can tune automatically with the ICOM, but the manufacturers state that some of the bands have to be tuned with uh, an antenna tuner, uh, and they're absolutely right, but it tunes, it does tune at 80 and it does tune at 6 and everywhere in between, uh, and all of my QSOs have been made on that antenna uh, running 10 watts. Uh, it's pretty high off the ground, I don't know exactly, it's probably, the base of the antenna is probably, I don't know, 8 metres from the ground, um, so I've been using that, but um, the guy who works for me, who's a a radio ham with a full license he set up his G5RV and you can just see a I don't know if you can see it actually down there there's a hole I get this right uh, it's not very clear actually but anyway it's there well there, there you go you can see the line so we've, so we've got this G5RV I think it's 101 feet it's sort of slightly collapsing uh, there you go so we've tried that as well. Um, and the guy who works for me, he uh, using the G5RV, he had a very nice chat with um, uh, a guy in um, Moscow at the end of last week. So that ain't going to fit in my garden. So uh, which is why I um, bought the vertical, uh, which uh, I need to get an antenna in installation engineer round and uh, get a bracket put on the side of the house and, uh, and get that set up so there you go um, but I made quite a few coming up about a dozen HF QSOs already so uh, there you go. so all this is happening outside the building um, so that's the setup essentially um, which I thought I'd share with you um, it's quite exciting to actually have a rig now in a HF setup that actually works properly um, and as I said, I've already made sort of several QSOs. Um, I was just listening actually to a guy in Reykjavik in Iceland, and I really wanted to uh, make a call with that guy, but it was, I'm not sure if it's the right term, but it was basically a pile up. Um, they were, they, he had people just waiting to uh, QSO with him, so uh, I didn't get a chance, but uh, it was interesting to listen to it anyway. Um, and my day will come, hopefully. Um, so there you go, ICOM IC756. Um, interestingly, I had a little tune around the uh, broadcast bands, um, and we were here one afternoon last week listening to a very, very strong signal from North Korea uh, using the G5RV uh, on, this, uh, on, on the receiver. Um, superb bit of kit, and the guy who sold it to me told me that it would be a superb bit of kit and um, he, we know each other quite well now so he knows that I know what is and what isn't a superb bit of kit and he was absolutely right sold as seen um, it's, 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 it's brilliant um, and I'm really enjoying um, the uh, amateur radio aspect of this hobby now um, I'm not going to stop DXing obviously um, that's not going to happen uh, but um, to be able to participate in both uh, elements of the hobby uh, is really good so uh, you know I'm very happy that um, uh, that I made this purchase and you know it didn't really cost me anything well it did but it didn't because like I said I sort of got rid of four uh, duplicate radios that I had that I stupidly bought two or three years ago uh, and a couple of others that I don't use so um, uh, uh, I'm still about a thousand quid uh, in pocket by doing that so uh, I, I don't feel too guilty about it 
Um, okay, well, that's just about it. I won't bother going through the features on the, uh, on the icon because this raid has been around quite a long time. Uh, it's been superseded, which is why um, it was up for sale anyway. Uh, it's, uh, you know, if you, if you want to know how it works, there'll be lots and lots of other videos of it in action uh, explaining all the features, etc. I mean, I need to finish reading the manual yet. And here it is, and uh, what can I say? It's, um, yeah, pretty comprehensive. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, my ham radio station, uh, all i got to do now is shift it uh, back to uh, my house and uh, set it all up there, So, uh, which I'll do probably in the next few days. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching.